Hello and welcome to another amazing guest expert interview for the Lead with Love Summit. And today is a very special day for me because I have the great honor and joy to speak to my dearest friend in the whole wide world, Elena Bensonov. And she is not only an outstanding entrepreneur, she's also a consciousness expert, spiritual guide, and overall wonder woman. And I cannot wait to talk with her today about how she leads with love in her business and sharing her wonderful wisdom with all of you. So welcome, my darling. Oh, thank you so much. It's always a pleasure to speak with you. Uh, and you, and you. We both were already so excited to come together to share some magic and joy with everyone in the audience here today. And before we begin, can you tell people a little bit about who you are and what you do? Wow. All right. So I started off, my background is a pharmacist and then, of course, board certified in functional medicine. And then years ago, I transitioned into the quantum realm, reading vibrational frequencies of people, places, historical public figures, private leaders, companies. So this has been a very interesting journey of shifting from medicine into the full awareness and investigating the nature of our reality. Yes, and you are, for me, the Mozart of spirituality oh, because what you have designed is essentially your own system of reading vibrational frequencies. Now, maybe to, to those of us who are like, what is that? What's a vibrational frequency? What does that mean? Could you share a bit about what that is all about and maybe also the work of Hawkins to, to kind of contextualize the work you Of do. course, yes. So for those people who are not familiar with what that is, we're all energy beings before we think of ourselves as a physical matter, right? So everything in the universe vibrates and has a vibrational frequency. That means it omits a certain sound, light information. And this information is imprinted in this biofield. So every single living sentient being, including crystals, animals, human beings, places, architectural places, right? Plants, everything has a vibrational frequency. And this information is imprinted in this biofield, whether it's collective, right? From each uh, type of kingdom, right? Or humanity themselves, of course, have a collective human uh, biofield, and then each individual also has their own individualized morphogenetic biofield. And then all of this information interacts with one another, right? And therefore, we're impacted by the surroundings, by everything we surround ourselves with, and we impact the world around us. Now, you brought in Dr. Hawkins' work and why it's instrumental. Dr. Hawkins created the scale of consciousness, which is from zero to 1000, right? And anything below the frequencies of 200 has to do with what we call the hijacking of the matrix. And why that is, is because this is the lens through which human beings tend to look into the world and perceive their reality through the victim lens, right? It's, it's the world against me. 200 frequency is where each being is capable of walking through this bridge of courage. We call it the bridge of courage where you recognize that everything is connected. So below 200 is this disconnected, distorted way of viewing the world. 200 is where each being recognizes I am connected. And then it moves on to willingness, acceptance, uh, reason, love, joy, and then of course, peace and enlightenment, right? So we use Dr. Hawkins scale of consciousness, but he used kinesiology in his work. And what Alejandro and I have done is we have created a system using technology where we apply the scale and in different vectors to measure people, places, and so forth. Now, Dr. Hawkins looked at one number for each being, and we realized we're so much more than that one number. So we look into over 20, or not 20, over 30 categories 
of what makes up a human being. And we're able to see how a person, for example, looks at their health, uh, looks at the world overall, how they relate to others, how much joy they're experiencing, right? How they look at finances, uh, personal growth, how intuitive they are, right? And how much do they really trust the messages they receive? So there's so many different aspects to look at to gain insight into our own reality. That is so fascinating. Yes. You see that you took this concept and developed it the way you did with your lovely partner and also my dear friend Alejandro is amazing. You you are a, a power couple and power consciousness experts uh, combined. And I think for anybody who's really interested in, in maybe also understanding more about their own Kind of vibrational makeup, um, you can really help individuals understand themselves on all of these different levels that you just shared with us. So I can only warmly recommend uh, that you reach out to Elena for that. And you know what I I always see in in your work and your business, and I have a, a fortunate position in your life in that I can see the front and the back end of it, and you have a perfect energy symmetry because what you are behind the scenes is what you are in front of the scenes and both are infused with so much love beauty and joy can you maybe share a little bit with my audience about what it means to you to really lead your life and your business from a place of love and beauty oh thank you so much well where to begin i believe that we are all beauty, magnificent beauty incarnate, and beauty is all around us. And to me, beauty is a love story. So when you are looking at the world through the lens of wonder, that childlike wonder where everything is in a state of awe, and you're open to this, which is really high vibrational frequency, when you're open and you're seeing everything as beauty, Ultimately, this is who you are and the way that if you're an entrepreneur or whatever it is you choose to do, whether it's cooking in the kitchen, right? Yes. Or anything, it translates, right, into everything that you do and that you are being. And that's how I view my business. I've never actually thought about it until quite a few people started <laughs> pointing it out to me. But to me, beauty is not separate from love, it's not separate from life itself. And therefore it's translated into everything that I do because beauty is inspiring. So when I feel inspired, I want people to also feel inspired because that inspiration sparks the divine creative essence that exists within each and every one of us to create magic, to contribute this beautiful magic and help Just by being that, you're helping shift the world around you into a much more beautiful space and place. That is so true. And both of us truly believe and feel that also beauty heals us. Uh, beauty has an incredible power to, to transmit to this energy of, of possibility, of joy, of expansion. It's heart opening to see beauty everywhere. And we probably all know this when we're in nature, We can see the beauty of nature. It uplifts our frequency when we when we when we interact uh, with with a space, a person, or something where we feel and see beauty. It really changes our vibration, and also that's why sometimes you know when we when we can create a beautiful space to work in, or or make an effort to you know put flowers on your desk or something that gives you that beauty creative spark that can really enhance also I feel, and I know you feel similarly, that can enhance our productivity, our inspiration, our ability to show up as, as that creative spark that you were sharing about. And so I, I think um, you, you model that extremely well. And I know many people ask you this, and I want to ask you this, is Where do you come up with all of your creations? Because I, I know you for quite some time. I know that you have created amazing things and you have such diverse talents. Um, 
how do you, especially when it comes to your business, how do you tap into your intuition and the voice of your heart? Is there any mm. practice you could maybe share? Yes. So of course, creativity comes in ebbs and flows. So this is also understanding that we're not constantly producing, right? Or having to produce something. For me, creativity stems from being inspired. And inspiration stems from the ability to truly connect to myself. And this means giving myself the time and space to receive, whether it's in a meditative state or just giving yourself time to write things down and feel truly connected to that part and bring it into fruition. So it is giving space to receive in order to create. So that's how it happens for me. But what inspires me, nature inspires me, people inspire me, life itself inspires me. And I know that in my case, when I'm inspired by the outside external things, which are usually uh, nature related, humanity related, then I bring that inward and sit with it and allow for that to come to a bigger vision of what it is that I'm trying to, in the most authentic way, bring out into the world. Because for me being authentic, truly authentic to who I am, and at the same time, recognizing that I'm part of this massive, massive universe and beyond, right? Um, it is birthing the essence the authentic essence of who I am and bringing it out into the world. So you basically allow the outside world to come within and in an almost alchemical process, you allow that to, to inspire you to give you creative visions and then also to have the bravery to express that because maybe you can share a bit about your transition from one world to another because I know in my community, there are a lot of people who have their expert status in something and yet their heart might call them to something maybe more spiritual or maybe more woo -woo or out there and they're afraid to let go of that. How did you manage to transition from a more traditional medical world to what you do today. Yes, thank you for asking that. And um, there's actually, now looking back, there's several transitions that happen and we'll talk about the last one because you've witnessed it with me. Yes. yes. So the first transition to, gosh, I, this was 2007. I had my four kids at that time and I was a regular you know, pharmacist working in a retail setting. And then a friend of mine, I met a friend in a preschool she, she was a mom, just like me, dropping off her, her daughter. And at that time, it was my son. And she said to me, I came up to her. I recognized her because I've seen her in a magazine, in a local magazine. I said, oh, you're the physician, the local physician in Tampa. And she said, yes. Oh, you had the courage to come up and ask me. I said, yes, I'm really happy to speak with you. I'm a pharmacist. And she said, you know, I'm going into this functional medicine training through the American Academy of Anti-Aging Medicine would you like to join me? And I said to her, well, not really, because I have four kids. I can't see myself going back and to school and studying. Well, she said, well, let's just try, you know, maybe just do one program and see how you like it. I remember going into that class and it was a weekend program, three days. And that was a massive, massive awakening for me because I knew that health and wellness had to do with diet and the environment, but I didn't know how much of it really was impacting and in what way and what were some of the tools that could be used. So that was my huge aha moment when the cardiologist in that class had us get up and said, we're going to do Qigong. I remember looking at my friend and I said to her, huh, what is he talking about? What is that? He said, we're going to feel the energy between our hands. And for me, it was so out of the box for me because I was so linear thinking, right? Very much, uh, you know, I need concrete data, <laughs> the symptoms, and here are the pills that you're going to take for whatever the symptom is. Well, he opened my whole world of seeing we're so much more than just 
this physical vehicle, right? And that was a massive aha moment. And from that moment on, it was like I was hungry to understand and learn more. Mm. And I realized that this is who we are as children. But then life happens, right? Yeah. And we take responsibilities and we disconnect from that wonder-like state of being truly curious. So his name was Dr. Sinatra. He reawakened that wonder-like state, child-like state within me. And I've never stopped searching. And I remember at that time working in a compounding pharmacy where we custom made medications. Okay. And I thought to myself, my soul was, was earning to understand the depth even further. And I started practicing energy medicine. I started working with people part-time. And at one point I remember telling my family, including my parents, I think I'm gonna leave the pharmacy world mm -hmm. and go into the energy medicine. And my parents said, you're out of your mind. What do you mean? You're gonna leave all that education, the comfort of having a salary and transition into the world of what? Mm -hmm. is it that you're going to do? And I said, I'm going to do energy medicine. I want to help people. And they looked at me like crazy and they thought I was crazy. But th there is this deeper earning that it was within me, this fire, right? That said, no, I I'm going to do it. And I don't really care about what other people think. So that was a massive leap of faith of transitioning from salary from having a predictable status you can say into something that was so drastically different yeah. and i loved it and i never looked back and the second transition i know you have watched me go through it is going public with the vibrational frequencies right and this whole, whole new realm of exploring and sharing the information with the world. And that was frightening. So even though I was practicing energy medicine and I was doing things in my private, private setting, going public was a big jump. And again, it required trust that what I have to share is in full integrity mm -hmm. and love mm -hmm. and inspiration. And it's just trusting that the universe will meet me because I am aligning authentically with who I am. Yeah, that's beautiful that you shared that. And I hope that inspires others because even many of us who are here are already entrepreneurs and we've already made that leap from whatever corporate career we've had. Uh, but even within our own business journey, there's that next level that can really scare us where we're like, this will expose me for being different and I will have to leave some of my expert status behind. And I relate so much to what you just shared because when I started my business coaching practice after I had sold my skincare brand, I was also quite intent on doing the strategic part of business coaching and helping people set up their business and take them to mindset work. And I had this niggling feeling that actually there's a part of me I'm leaving behind, which is my intuition, which is my clear cognizance, which is my spiritual take on things. And when I kind of included that and added intuitive to the business coach label in the beginning, I thought, oh my God, I'm, I'm, I'm going to lose credibility in people's eyes. I've, I've built all of this business, business journey on, 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 you know, hard facts. And then I realized this was actually not even the truest part of me. That was the truest part of me. And I think you're the same. And when you leap, then you actually realize, wow, you attract your people. You, you actually become more magnetic because you're more authentic and you're more true to all of you. And I think that's what you've experienced now. I see your business growing and growing because that energy you vibrate, it's really your vibe attracts your tribe. And when you amp up that vibe by digging more and more into your truth, the more people are called into your space, into your universe. And I love that. And I uh, would love to know how you practice self-love in those transitional phases, or even those phases where you might get some public pushback or something. Um, how, how do you back yourself? How do you lean into self-love that even if others disagree or don't 
support or understand you, how can you lean back into love? Mm, that's beautiful. One thing I want to say, and I think it's very important that you cannot be authentically yourself unless you are showing up completely as you. Yeah. So that means as you shared, until you incorporated intuition into your business, right? You were somehow maybe in some ways not fully authentic, right? Yes. So for me, everything I'm doing at the moment is absolutely authentic because I employ every aspect of myself. I bring my whole being into mm -hmm. what I do and I wouldn't do it any other way. And it is scary. Um, and I think if I were to do this years ago, I would have not been ready for it. And I'll tell you why, because it takes courage. It takes a certain amount of stamina within yourself to be able to also have the pushback. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you have to know when you're stepping fully into you that it's okay not to be accepted mm -hmm. by some. Mm -hmm. And that was in the first few weeks when we went public, I think I, you know, yeah, the pushback I I've gotten. I agree. And, and uh, there were not, I mean, there were comments, some comments that were not very nice. And I had an advice of somebody who's been in the public eye, who's been rejected, pushed back, seen as an outcast for the last 50 plus years. Okay. Um, and he gave me a really great advice. He said, Elena, do not read all of the comments people are leaving. Yeah. In fact, disconnect from it. This will keep you in a place of being yourself, being in your love and in your heart. So I always go back to, I'm coming from a place of love. Mm -hmm. I'm here to share from my heart. Mm -hmm. And those people that are triggered, that's also okay. So I'm okay with that. So it's knowing that I'm doing things in full integrity. And how do I rebalance in between? That's your question. Well, it took me a year of working seven days a week. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> my, when my, you know, the business exploded, right? Yeah. And then I realized, oh, I need to go back and change my schedule. So this is also recognizing that as you go through shifts and ebbs and flow in your business it's always important to go back and reevaluate what is working and it might be working on business scale right? financially it might be working well but maybe for you personally for your health it's yes. depleting you right so i for me personally i realize i need breaks in between and this mm -hmm. is healthy <laughs> it's very healthy because as an entrepreneur you have to give yourself space to receive and whether that receiving means going and recharging in nature or just sitting and reading a book or maybe going some people might feel like they need to go to the gym I'm one of those people where I need to move my body because my job is sitting most of the time right I'm yeah. indoors sitting most of the time listening to beautiful music mm -hmm. giving yourself time to again reconnect to that creative essence that exists and in order to have this creative flow right and in order to give you have to learn to receive so this has been my big lesson in the last year mm -hmm. is to learn to receive which I found to be one of the most challenging things as a business person is to say I need help and that help means I need breaks yes to recharge yes. and refuel um, so that is the way that I balance myself and I'm able to give back and disconnect from any negative things. Not that it's not there because it's always part of who we are. Those shadows will always show up. Yes. It's acknowledging them. And also they're there to, to help me recognize what is it within myself that triggers me that I haven't healed yet. So it's always an opportunity for healing, but the only way to heal is give yourself space, right? In the midst of the hurricane, it's very difficult to, to heal, right? So it's when you have the space, then the healing can take place. Very true. And I, and I think what you shared earlier also about the advice you got, um, I know, especially many highly sensitive people 
are scared of the pushback and the criticism so much so that it can stop them from doing something that they know they want to do, but they feel they can't handle the pushback. And um, I felt uh, the same when I did my TED talk, I was terrified of the YouTube comment world because <laughs> YouTube is not always a kind place as mm -hmm. we all know. Mm -hmm. And I practiced the same. I actually didn't look at the comments until many years later. Now I can look at them. But at the time, it would have been too raw for me to, to see how people might judge me. And um, it would have detracted from my joy around the experience. So I also protected myself. And now, because I have some, you know, I have grown as a person since then, I can read it now. And if I read negative things, it, it doesn't impact me now. But I know at that time, it was the right thing to do to insulate myself. And the other thing that I found really precious, and I think this might be also something that you feel, is to build a community of people who support you. And that can even be friendship. I know you've been a huge support for me. Uh, just We can talk about everything. And I uh, also know of course, your, your partner and business partner uh, also has that role. But I think um, maybe you can speak to generally the role of having people on your side and that can be part of an actual team or just people on your bigger proverbial team and how that can actually change our journey as entrepreneurs. Mm. I would say having, even if you have one person in your life mm -hmm. that truly understands you, that is honest with you, supports and cheers for you, you can consider yourself one of the luckiest people on this planet. Yes. And I am extremely fortunate because I have two people like that in my life, which is Alejandro and you. And for me, having a girlfriend who fully supports me, but also you're so well versed in everything in so many ways that it is absolute gift. You're an absolute gift in my life. And I believe that, I know that whenever I go through, through questions in my mind and I'm trying to bring an idea to fruition, you are usually the first person that I will speak with <laughs> because I actually don't have anyone else to speak with about my ideas and I know that you completely understand me and you have this wealth of knowledge, experience of being an entrepreneur, being an online world. So you are an absolute treasure in my life. Ah, and you are my treasure too. <laughs> this is why I say that even if you have one person that can support you, unfortunately where I live and where I am, I don't have people like that. I don't have the support group that gets it fully, right? Uh, but I do believe in building <clears throat> this powerful network of like-minded people, and I'm all for it. Uh, but it's just finding the treasures. It's like finding a needle in the haystack, right? So yes, I think it's absolutely instrumental. And you have played such a huge part of my life. I know that we met uh, you were coaching me for my TED talk, yes. uh, TEDx talk, um, and then of course COVID happened. But when we were having our interactions, you were the highlight of my day, of my week, <laughs> and I'm just absolutely grateful that you exist on this planet at this time. So thank oh, you. Oh well, I I am so grateful for you and and the love and joy and light you bring into my life every single day. My day always starts with a message from you. Uh, yes. And, um, you know, I think it is, it is also so beautiful to see that as entrepreneurs, we can have different soulmates that journey with us. And um, that's, of course, valuable in our personal lives and in our business lives. And I just want to suggest maybe a practice that you can manifest your soul sister you can manifest uh someone that you dream of having that maybe right now you don't have and i believe that if you are first of all open for your business soulmate and soul soulmate friendship business whatever it is you're looking for where you're looking for more support or it can be both can be just separate 
um, is that A, if you're open geographically, wherever they are, that, you know, we, most of the time we connect digitally, you and I, because uh, I, I live over here in Germany, you're in the US, so we don't actually spend a lot of physical time <laughs> together, but we spend a lot of time energetically, emotionally together. So if you remove that one barrier, that helps. And then the second is, is to just, in your mind, really mm, create the person you would love to connect with. Because I always dreamed of having that one true best friend in always. And I, I wasn't sure if I would ever find that. And I had a very clear vision of that. And I have a process that I've used for a few things in my life. Um, practical things like how my dream apartment would look like or even the people I wanted to attract. And what you can do and what I have done is that you write a gratitude list as if it's already happened. And you say, I'm so grateful that I have this wonderful soul sister or friend or partner or dream apartment or whatever it is. And then you say, and I'm so grateful that they have this attribute and this trait. And I, I'm so happy that they're interested in this and this and this. And you can, you can really charge that with your energy of joy and hope and then just release it into the universe and let that connect to you. And I know, and I'm just thinking about this, I know your partner, Alejandro, used something quite similar to find yes. you. Can you maybe yes. talk about that? Yes, it's unbelievable. <clears throat> so his, his whole life, he believed that there is the one person, his person. This is what he shared with me. And I believe I actually posted a little thing on YouTube where he, he wrote this beautiful poem a year and a half before he met me. But yes, he intentionally used something like what you're sharing. Uh, I believe he said either daily or several times a week where he would focus on it for a whole year. Yes, yes and it works. And you too. I did. I, not I did in a... the same geographic location no. either. <laughs> no, no, he was in California. I was in Florida. And I remember I also felt that way my whole life. And I would get sometimes frustrated. Why is it that I can't find my person, right? But it's, I think if you have this deep longing and knowing yes. and you trust it, you really trust it, it will happen. Yes. Whether you're looking for your best friend in the world or maybe best business alignment for you or your life partner, whatever it might be. Exactly. Yes. And if you infuse that with this energy, a charge it with the energy of love and hope and possibility, yes. then all things can, can come to us because actually just the act of imagining that I feel will raise your vibration because it opens your heart. It, it makes you magnetic to that which you wish to attract. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. So I love that. And you know, and I know that I love using cards overall in my work and I want to pick a card for us and see what topic arises and see if I can uh, formulate a question around that or if it gives us something juicy to dive in. Um, and you and I, we, we both sometimes read each other cards when we when yes. we're, uh, have a question at a crossroad and we both love this practice. And you are excellent with cards. Well, thank you. Cards are for me um, really a beautiful way of uh, connecting to my intuition and then letting it channel through. Um, and we have actually two cards fell out, beautiful cards. We have serendipity and regeneration. So it's kind of like the energy of spring and serendipity. And maybe um, I think this actually ties in the serendipity, especially ties into uh, just what we shared in a way, that's what comes to me. I wonder what comes to you is that um, when you set your intentions for what you desire and you, you infuse that with energy, then good luck kind of finds you. And then you have that serendipity of finding that person running into somebody who will connect you to somebody or however it's going to work. So that's kind of how 
I see that card relating to what we just shared. Yes. I want to say that there is no coincidences, yes. that everything is always divinely orchestrated. Yes. And this card absolutely represents that when you show up in the world as your authentic self, right? All the magic that you think could be just a, you know, a, a, a magical thing that just happens, you know, where coincidence is not coincidence. It's the universe saying yes to you by aligning with exactly what you envision. That's so beautiful. And it's basically so true. When you say yes to you, life also has the opportunity to say yes to you. So it starts with that inner yes. And that's a beautiful share. I wholeheartedly agree with that. And now the card of regeneration. I think what it says to for me is that, uh, especially on the entrepreneurial journey, that we must give ourselves that chance to a change and regenerate, and b also to to do what you shared earlier, to take time for the time out, so that you can be reinvigorated, that you can have um, new life coming through you and that even an old looking tree has new life in it <laughs> yes and here's the thing uh, with business as a business person as an entrepreneur you have to realize that you have to always reinvent yourself mm -hmm. create something new so in order for that to happen in order for this regeneration to happen as you mentioned and we talked about it it is about receiving giving time to receive right in order to you know for to plant a seed right it takes time until it blossoms into a beautiful tree so it's the same it's the same message here with regeneration yes. that to create something new out of something that you've been doing for quite some time you have to take the time off to recreate and regenerate yes yes and and you you know you also from your kind of old world, you also have so many mind body practices, which I encourage people also to, to kind of dive in and discover because you are also my go to health expert for everything. Uh, and, and that, that side of you has also helped me take even better care of my body, have more awareness for my body, you even wrote a book about that. Maybe you can share a little bit about that uh, part of your business. And <clears throat> yes, thank you. Well, the book is called Holistic Wisdom, Awakening Your Inner Healer. I believe every human being is a healer. And the healer that most people are thinking or seeking of are not outside of ourselves, but within. And it's really a message. My book is a message of learning everything you can about yourself because it is important to recognize that we're not just a physical vehicle that our body our emotions our spiritual aspects are all connected so the book goes into a deep dive of how to test yourself for different sensitivities how to test what kind of emotions are out of balance and also different exercises of how you can rebalance recharge regenerate your body, mind, and soul. Ah, yes, yes, and yes, and yes to all that. Because um, I know many highly sensitive people feel the same way I do. Our bodies are very receptive to uh, feeling everything. And that can have positive sides and not so positive sides. So taking great care of our body as well in this entrepreneurial journey, yes. I think is so crucial because um, if our bodies are not along for the ride, then basically we're not gonna go very far. It needs to be really, we need to bring mind, mind, body and soul along. And I think the more we can create awareness for what our body needs, tune into also the wisdom of our body, um, the, the further we can go with that. And that's why I love that you have this breadth of, of offerings. Um, yes. And, and I, I think this can be so helpful, especially when you work hard, you're 
potentially sometimes in a hustle mode it's launch it's this is that you you forget to eat you you, you don't sleep you, you do all these things and that might be okay if it's you know for short burst for something but bringing that whole thing into balance and how we can really help ourselves heal ourselves um you do such a wonderful job with with that kind of work as well so uh, i recommend that uh if if you are now maybe struggling with your body or looking to make better friends with your body then um i know you have excellent resources for that available too one thing i want to say that it's extremely important for people who are whether you're an entrepreneur or you're working for somebody else or you're just a parent at home, it's not just a parent, actually the most important job of being a parent, being a mom or a dad. When you're very busy being busy, right? Which is mm -hmm. I think part of the problem that is happening on our planet at the moment. What happens is we disconnect from all the gifts that we have, the gifts of senses. People mm -hmm. forget that, you know, there's a way to reconnect to your sense of smell, sense of touch, right? Senses are what enhances and contributes to this experience. And we started having the conversation earlier today about beauty and love. Yeah. To fully experience beauty and love, you have to bring all of your senses onto the table. Mm -hmm. And without, when you feel disconnected, right? When you're on autopilot of fight or flight, which most business people are in fight or flight, right? And this is why I said that for me, it took a while to learn that I have to take time off to reconnect to my core essence. Reconnecting to the core essence means if you're going to eat a strawberry, you're going to enjoy that strawberry, right? Yes. And every aspect of that strawberry, yes. you're going to listen to the music. It's really allowing for that music and feeling that music being infused in every cell of your being, right? Mm -hmm. Touch, it's about you know, maybe hugging your pet or your loved one and really experiencing that physical touch, which is so important right now, especially in our disconnected state of the world that we're all experiencing. And it's really about reconnecting to every aspect of who we are to have that full experience of beauty and love, which to me, beauty is love. So to experience love, or the state of love, right? Love is not an emotion, it's beyond that. It's about a state of being, yeah. right? You have to enlist all of your senses. It's interesting because I had COVID recently yes. and I lost my sense of smell. So it's slowly, slowly kind of coming back. But it's amazing how we take that for granted. Because I remember, you know, even now, sometimes I'll eat my meals and I'm like, oh, I'm missing that full experience. Yeah. of smelling, right? Yeah. The strawberry, the raspberry, whatever, the tea. Yeah. Right? So don't take those senses for granted because it, it really enhances your experience here on earth and why we're here on earth. Yeah. And it's so true that it's, it's something we so easily take for granted because we just... Thing. this is our, just our normal state but it's actually our magical state that we have this ability to really have this multi-sensory experience of life and especially hsps have an even you know stronger sensory experience because we feel everything so powerfully and to to reconnect to those senses is so great and maybe those who are like oh that sounds great i want to do this how can people make friends with their senses? And I believe you also have a gift related to that. I do have a gift. So <clears throat> earlier this year, I launched a program. It's called Daya, Deepen and Anchor, Anchor Your Awareness. And this is a six-week program where every week you reconnect to a different sense, whether it's intuition, smell, touch, right? Uh, hearing. So the gift is to that I'm giving is awakening your sense of sight which is amazing because if you think about it, you think, oh, I see, I see things, but do you really see things? Because majority of what we see is not what we perceive. It's the world beyond the physical. 
So through an exercise that I'm giving as a gift, it's important to recognize that you have to disconnect from the blue light that is coming out through the screen. So yes, set your time when, of course, when you're doing the work, but it's very important to disconnect from that as well and go into nature. Mm -hmm. And imagine yourself being, this is just an example, a two-year-old or maybe a one-year-old. Have you ever watched babies and how they just begin to walk and they're just seeing the world for the very first time? Like literally going out and seeing a tree and just really seeing it, right? So it's giving yourself permission to experience the world through an eyes of a two-year-old, mm. right? So being more in nature because nature truly reminds us of the beauty and the essence of who we are. And the third step will be really taking in every day, reminding yourself to connect to something that you are seeing as if you're seeing for the first time and enjoying it. Yes? Beautiful. And this is one of the things actually I realized uh, that I was missing when I had my COVID for 15 days when I was sick. One of my kids, Mark and I, daily go for little walks. And on our way, there's jasmine that's blossoming, right? We live in Florida, so jasmine is very common. So on our way, we actually pick two jasmine flowers and we smell it. This is the beginning of our walk. We really inhale and we're, you know, this aroma is just, we're allowing for this aroma to enhance our state of being. It usually happens second part of the day, like six o'clock, seven o'clock after dinner, we take our dogs for a walk. And it is such a beautiful experience because after that, we, we look at the sky, we look at the trees. I mean, this is literally something we do every day. And we just stay in a state of wonder together. And we point out things that are beautiful. I don't know how it came to me. I think because my mom was probably naturally that way her whole life. And every day we would go on a walk, she would pinpoint fairies to us, right? So to most people, there is no fairies. To her, there were fairies everywhere. Oh, so when I, yeah, so when Mark and I went for a walk when I, during COVID, I realized I couldn't smell the flower. And it's been missing. But anyway, we still do the ritual. Yesterday, we went on a walk and we picked the flowers and I could just slightly smell it a little bit. And I said, oh, it's coming back. It's coming back. Uh, the sense of smell, but then we it enhances our flow of connecting to the rest of the natural world around us. So it's a wonderful exercise, whatever it is you choose to do in nature, to give yourself permission to connect to this beauty through your senses, because it's going to enhance your experience and increase your vibrational frequency. So beautiful, what a gorgeous share and also what a wonderful gift that you can find right next to this video to get access to that for free so that is such a generous gift you're sharing so thank you for that and i love what you just shared about how we have this opportunity to to really use our senses to connect to beauty and this is true for wherever we live whatever we do it doesn't have to be that we are in a stunning uh, supposedly stunning location it can just be your neighborhood park it can be anywhere really uh and and if you have the lens of beauty you will find it and i think that's so encouraging that um beauty is is a state of mind and you can see it if you're intent on finding it um and and that is so so beautiful to see how you embody that literally every single day so <laughs> so so beautiful and my last question for you today is what is your vision of love for humanity for the future i know you have done a lot of research about the future of humanity and you're very concerned about humanity so what is your vision of love for humanity well first i want to say where we are in a state of the world at the moment because yes, it's very please. very important please uh, in so alejandro and i of course have been measuring frequencies of the human collective throughout eons thousands and thousands of years we've looked at major events 
wars and everything else. In the last year, the human collective consciousness has dropped to a frequency of 100. So this is on a scale of zero to 1000. 100 is a frequency of fear. Mm. And I say that we're living through the times of the collective shadow. And it is an invitation, truly an invitation to see which aspect that you're still fearful in your own personal life. Because in order for us to rise as collective, because none of us are separate. I am you, you are me, we're each other, right? To rise as a collective, we have to do our own work and contribution to this planet, to humanity. So whatever scares you, just know you're not alone, mm -hmm. that we're all scared of something. And it is facing this fear in the most courageous way, holding hands with your fear, that is going to help you shift into the higher frequencies. So we've looked into the frequencies of next year and the years to come. So the good news is <laughs> that we looked into the year of 2046, and this is where the collective consciousness of humanity goes into love. Mm -hmm. But the other really beautiful thing that's happening right now is it's this new generation. We call them, the, or they're called the alpha generation. They're born between the year of 2013 and 2025. They're all born at the, the collectively, right? They're born at a higher frequency than most of humans. They're born at the frequency of love. Mm -hmm. So if you have your little kids now, or perhaps your kids are a little older and you feel that they're evolved beings, remember that to support their state of curiosity, their state of wonder, and let them be reminders and examples to you to stay in that frequency of love, because this is the way that we're all going to shift as humanity. Mm -hmm. So my vision is love, <laughs> and that's the, the final outcome. Wonderful. Well, what a beautiful way to close this gorgeous mm -hmm. conversation with you. I'm so grateful for you to share your heart and soul and joy with me and all of us today. It's as always so, so special to spend time with you and really thank you so much. And I hope that everyone got a lot of value from this. And I hope you feel excited to reconnect to your senses, reconnect to beauty, and really also follow your most authentic true path so that you can contribute your gift to humanity because we all need you and we need your divine spark so thank you so much my dear for being here today oh thank you so much it's such a pleasure always thank you bye thank everyone you. see you bye. in the next video bye, bye.